Welcome to ETM 260 Computer Aided Design. This is Lecture 9, Assembly Tools, Part 2. This video is supplemented with the PowerPoint given in the class. Let's just start the review of the top down assembly design approach. This approach allows the user the ability of creating components inside of the assembly environment. This is a very useful technique that allows the user to take dimensions directly from the assembly components and also to take features that are complex and to match them exactly with the components already available in the assembly. To show you how it's done in the next, we're simply going to open Lecture 9, Part 1. This is a part that I have already created as an assembly in NX. Now we're going to create a part inside of this assembly. We go to the Assemblies tab. We're going to go into Create New. We have to make sure that we save it as a model with the proper units that correspond to the units of the assembly. And then we hit OK. At this moment, you could add the name that you would like to have. So we could call it, let's see, Part 1. And this part will be saved in the same location where your assembly is currently saved. We could have it as a model or as an entire part. Model would only include the solid. If we have it as a part, it will have the solid, the coordinate systems, the axis, the dantum planes, and any other information that we need. So that's how we're going to create it. And we're going to create as a original layer option and the origin is going to be absolute so that it matches with the origin of the piston. So now if we go to the um, assembly navigator and we see now that the model is inside of the part of the part that we have. So now notice if we double click on it we're now able to go and modify it as much as we want. This gives you the information of what we have. At this moment, the Danton plane is uh, hidden. So we're going to show it to see the new Danton plane that we're going to use. So at this moment, you will be able to use the skills that we have learned from previous lectures to create a sketch. For example, you're going to sketch, and we select this part over here. And then notice that we're able to sketch, and we will be able to project or to use any one of the lines or any of the intersections that are already provided in the assembly. This is one single part, but if you have multiple ones, you will be able to use the features of all the parts that you have. Now you would also be able to save the part, and as I said before, the part will be saved in the same location where you will have your assembly. Now let's talk about sub-assemblies. Sub-assemblies is a very interesting technique that we could use whenever we have a set of components that are repeated inside of a big assembly. If you notice in figure C, we have these components that repeat themselves four different times. So it's easier to create this, all these components together as a sub-assembly and then enter them into the main assembly as a single component. So let's see how we do that in an X. To do that, we're going to open a new part. It's going to be an assembly in millimeters. And then the first part that we're going to enter is going to be the master rod. We're going to enter it in the main origin, in the absolute origin. And we're going to click to zero. Notice when we enter the part, it, it is imported with all the dantum planes and the axis. Uh, for the time being, we're going to hide those. Simply click on the part, and instead of making a reference part to be the entire part, we're going to do the model. Model indicates that it's only the solid without all those reference information. Since it was the main part, it's going to be fixed, and notice that the the uh, uh, constraint is already added. 
So now what we're going to add is the subassembly that it has been already created. We're going to add it as a single component. So we're going to go into subassembly. And we're just going to select a position where we'd like the subassembly to be. So notice that now we have the subassembly, all the components of that subassembly, and we enter them as a single one. So we're going to constrain now the subassembly. We're going to create an infer axis between this axis over here and the one over here in the hole. So we're going to go this way and this one over here. Now that is aligned, what we want to make sure is that this rod is right in between the surface. So we're going to use center and we're going to use 2 to 2 so that the inside surfaces of the master rod align with the articulation rod. We go into the isometric view and notice that we can make the whole assembly now rotate about the master rod. Now what we want to do is we want to create an angle between this articulation rod and this master rod. We don't have a particular, for example, if you notice, this surface is these two surfaces that are not parallel to each other. So we cannot use that particular, any of those surfaces to align with this. So the best way to do it is by using the Danton planes created uh, in the parts. So we're going to make the parts again. Instead of reference, we're going to go into entire part. And the same thing for this one. So references for the entire part. So now notice that we have multiple Danton planes. And what we want to do is we're going to use a angle constraint between the planes. So we're going to add an angle constraint between this plane and between the plane of this articulation rod. And we're going to have, um, it, notice that it, how it's measured. So we're going to do it from here to here. So it's going to be 180 minus 72. And, and next, that's the calculations for you. So notice that the angle. Please make sure that you do the same process three more times in order to complete this assembly. You also need to add the components in here to make it as a full assembly. Remember that this part is it's a part of your tutorials due for the class. The next skill that we need to learn for assemblies is how to create an exploded view. To do that, we're going to open the file that is subassembly2. This subassembly2 has the articulation rod, it has this piston pin, and it has a plug. What we would like to do is to create an explosion so that we could see how each part relates to the other one by position. In order to do so, we're going to go into the Assemblies tab and we're going to go into Explored Views. We're going to click on New Explosion. Notice that it's asking us for a name. I'm just going to give the default name of Explosion 1. There are two different ways to create an explosion, manually or automatically. Let's just start with automatically. We're going to edit the explosion. Sorry, we're going to explode, auto explode. We're going to select the components that we would like to explode. So we select all of them. And then you provide a distance that you would like to have. So let's see, 100. Notice that it was really good about creating an explosion or a distance between the rod and the, and the pin. However, it didn't separate as much for the plugs. I prefer to do explosions manually. 
So let me show you how I will do. I create a new explosion. You want to create this into a new explosion? No. I'm gonna create two, and I'm gonna start from scratch. The way that I like to create explosions is by uh, maintaining the um, relationships between the parts. And I usually like to do them in a specific views. For example, I'm going to go into the front view and notice so that I can keep the same relationship between the piston pin and the rod and the plugs. So I'm going to edit it. So I'm going to select the objects. I'm going to move the piston, the plugs, all of them together. And I'm going to move the objects. And when I move them, I like to move them in a specific axis. So I'm going to move them all upwards. And move them upwards. Just going to zoom out. Upwards. And then I'm going to apply. So notice that if I look from the top view, I haven't lost the relationship between the plug, the pins, and the articulation rod. So once again, I'm going to look for it from the front view. And then I'm going to put the plug a little bit higher and the other one a little bit below. So I'm going to edit explosion and I'm just going to select one of the plugs and I'm going to move it upwards just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to do the same behavior with the plug at the bottom. I'm going to select the object and I'm going to move it downwards. Once again, if you look at from the top, notice that you have not lost any type of relationship between the components. The same thing from the side view. And if you look at it from the isometric, now you could simply tell that this pin will go into here, this plug will fit into here, and this one will also go into the pin.